Hello there. Making this video late on Sunday evening. Uh, I think I like 8,600 videos. I think this is only number two of what I would call an emergency video. Uh, you know, I'm part English myself. I certainly don't want the English or the Aussies to think I'm picking on them. I would never confuse uh, good people that I love to meet but I can't afford to visit with the country. And there's plenty of problems here, but... And people are saying, well, there's a million signatures against digital ID. And the answer to that is, who cares? You are going to get it anyway. You are going to get it. You know it, and I know it. And there's an emergency right now, and I don't know how many English and uh, Australian and New Zealand and Canadian citizens, because you're all getting it realize and we have our own stable coin here in the united states but it is actually a true emergency now i'm going to talk about vietnam here for a second and this completely ties into it and it serves as a perfect example for what's coming to uh, the uk and australia and canada and new zealand and if you want to say the united states that's fine it very likely possibly is i don't know but it is definitely coming to these crown countries how are you going to tie in vietnam Nobody's talking about this right now. You could go search this information. It's absolutely everywhere. The State Bank of Vietnam has closed 43% of bank account holders. This is due to biometric, the lack of biometric information associated with their bank accounts. That's 86 million bank accounts. And they have, I think, until the 30th, which is what, three days from now, two days from now, to produce it, and uh, if not, then the money gets, well, this, the government's just going to take it. And you're going to, oh, yeah, Vietnam, uh, compare Vietnam's communist country, which, of course, it is, to the UK. Of course, the UK is a communist country. You could say that it's not, but it is. Your leader, your great leader there, Kier, in his own words from his own mouth, is said, I am a socialist. That's a fact. He is a socialist. So, this is what you got coming in the UK. This is, nobody's reporting this. It's going to be launched in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, God knows where else. I remember two years ago, two, three years ago, starting in 2019, I started talking about digital IDs and the dangers it posed. Oh, I think it's crazy theory. You're absolutely nuts. It's not going to happen. Oh, it's just crazy talk. Well, it's coming. He's already said uh, that you won't be able to work without a digital ID. He's painting a, a false picture, a false narrative of what the digital... Because you British citizens have way more identification than most Americans do. I know Americans that don't even have driver's licenses, much less a passport, much less anything else. They get by, they live in the backwoods, but they don't have any ID at all. None. You people have passports and driver's licenses. You guys have IDs out the yin-yang in these crown countries. And they want to convince you you need another one for, like, your safety or the safety of the country? Well, this is what they're going to do. Yeah, you got society over here. They want to form a new society. And if you decide that's a bad idea, and there are, I've seen no less, and this sounds like an exaggeration, Thousands of videos of old people and people in wheelchairs. One guy getting arrested for saying, I love bacon. Literally, I love bacon. Guy got arrested. Hauled away. Uh, like, well, if you don't want to join the new society, we're going to stick you in prison. And there's tons of examples of that. But they can't stick them all there. Obvious reasons. And this is the answer to it. This is what's going to happen to you folks in Canada and UK and New Zealand land of Kiwis, and Australia. This is what's going to happen. They're going to fix that problem because you can't take half a society and stick them in the pokey. Yeah, that's what we call it here in the United States, the pokey, the big house. They're going to fix that problem. Yeah, that's right. The government fig figured a way out. They're going to stick you in a digital jail. It's called digital ID. And that's what's coming for you. This is what so many of you said that I was nuts for saying was coming. Back in 2019. Now everybody's in prison. Yeah? You uh, don't like what uh, they say? Well, they're going to turn your car off. That's coming. 
You know, like, well, you, we've seen you've uh, bought too much meat lately. Well, you've had your meat ration. You're actually causing uh, climate problems here in uh, the UK and globally because you bought too much meat. You're not allowed to have any more meat this month. No, 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 we're going to cut you off. You don't like what you say? Well, we're going to shut your bank account down. Just, this is digital ID. They're biometric. 86 million in Vietnam. 86, you know... God knows what percentage of those are just poor people, street vendors that have a bank account. And they're squirreling away whatever little bit of money that they have to stake in the bank. Well, it's gone. 86. That's 43%. That's basically half. It's not exactly half, but it's essentially half of the country. This is what you got coming in the UK and Canada and Australia. Maybe here. Because we have the stable coin coming, and there's nothing stable about it. Because the only way out of the national debt, there's only two ways. Only two. WW3, and uh, to devalue stable coin, you move the US dollar into stable coin, you're going to devalue the stable coin, and that will eliminate out the national debt. It's both evil and brilliant. There's a meeting this Tuesday, basically 48 hours from now, where every general, I think this has only occurred three times in the past, uh, WW2, i.e. Pearl Harbor, uh, Vietnam, and uh, 9-11. Only those three, and I think this is the fourth. It could be the fifth, but I think it's the fourth. It's super rare. There have been some soldiers posting about what's actually going to happen at this meeting on Tuesday, where every general above brigadier general is going to be there. I don't actually want to tell you what those soldiers said, but it's it's really bad news, and I hope it doesn't happen. I'm not a doom and gloomer. I'm not a doom goblin at all. I don't want anything bad to happen. I've been watching Gold and Silver now for basically every day for 35 or more years. I've been buying bullion since I was a teenager. Gold and Silver over the past 30 days has absolutely gone ballistic. Watch it by roughly 2 p.m. tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time. I know the precious metals are traded nonstop through the weekend. I know that. I watch it. I keep refreshing it. Uh, if they go uh, ballistic uh, by basically 2 p.m. tomorrow, you know the big thing is going to happen. Whether that be the event on Tuesday or because of uh, digital currency... I don't tell anybody what to do with their currency. It's just a horrible, horrible idea. You know, I'm not living the luxury lifestyle with stacks of $100 bills behind me. But please, God, consider some asset diversification. By the way, there's a train load after train load of uh, United States M1A Abrams uh, battle tanks in Estonia heading to the Russian border. The Russians have deployed, I think, their RU-26 hypersonics at the border with Poland in Belarusia. That's Belarusia for those of you who don't speak Russian. Poland has warned its citizens about uh, hoarding some cash and some food. France and Germany have uh, done the same. There is a storm right on the horizon. And this is really important. There's, And I've had super rich people tell me this for decades now. People can be on the left or the right and they can flap their lips and... You know, this person's this side and this person's this side. But people that make money, they drop their emotions and their feelings and their positions and uh, their political orientations and they stick their money where they know uh, the wise decision is and that's not based upon emotions or your stance. And you always watch where these people stick their money. And uh, right now, and I'm not saying buy precious metals because they're way too high, way too high. Um, but watch what happens with uh, gold, silver, and platinum uh, by roughly, you know, you say 12 noon to 3 p.m. tomorrow. If it spikes more than it has been, and it's been going ballistic for the past 30 days, you know you're right on the cusp or about that far away. I wish the best for Australians and for Brits and uh, Canadians. Um Tons of Australians are fleeing Australia. Same is true of the UK. Even your great leader there in the video that I watched many times, like, if you don't like it here, this is essentially what he said. If you don't like it here, you get 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 the heck out. 
And a lot of people are taking that advice, and I can't imagine myself. I'd love to visit people there, and since I'm part English, I'd love to see it, but there's just no way. I mean, the whole country should be considered off-limits for the horrible things that are happening there. You Brits say you got a million signatures to stop the digital ID. doesn't matter if you have five million. It's not going to stop. You're going to get it. They're going to stick you, and that's what it is. It's not a digital ID. It's a digital prison. And that's not my opinion or my feeling or my belief. That's a fact. I would say you could take that to the bank, but that's a really bad idea right now. Have asset diversification. I wouldn't even think about buying gold or silver or platinum, right? I told everybody to buy platinum back when it was 860 an ounce about six months ago. Those of you who took my advice, and some of you did, I mean, you've already doubled your money. It's doubled now, platinum has. I wished I bought some, but I had no money at the time. I bought a new farm, and I was absolutely, well, not broke, but I mean, pretty, very tight, very broke. Um, this is an emergency. I mean, it really is an actual emergency. And you need to sit down, take a half hour out of your life for a day or two or three. And it's like, you know, I got all this money sitting in the bank. Digital ID is coming. How could I diversify my assets? You know, you make that decision. There's some things to consider as an answer that I was planning on making a video tomorrow or Tuesday on, but I want to see. We're going to find out after Tuesday when some information leaks about the meeting of all the generals, but that's extremely huge. The same thing that happened to Vietnam is the exact same thing that will happen to you. You disagree with the, uh, the crown, you know, the state of the UK. Your digital ID, they're going to shut your bank again. The same thing that happened to the Canadians that were protesting. Remember that? Peacefully protesting in Canada. Oh, my bank account's closed. I can't even pay my bills or buy groceries. Oh. A lot of Brits are saying, I will not comply. Well, that's great. You're not going to comply. Well, guess what? The government don't care because they'll shut off your bank account. They'll keep you from entering a grocery store. They'll keep you from driving. They'll keep you from doing everything other than breathing. They don't care if you don't comply. You will be forced to comply because you will be in a digital prison. And that is a fact. And if you don't think that's an emergency, something to uh, perk your ears up about and pay attention to, then you really are, you know, living in a smoky cloud of some sort of uh, oblivious delusion about the world around you. You really are. I hope you have a lovely week. I'm not a doom goblin. You can call me one if you like, but this is serious. So, thanks.